we've got our four blood types and now we're going to add our antibodies. So the first antibody I'm going to add is type A antibody and I'm going to put one drop in each of the A wells, which is where it goes. One drop into each patient's blood and see if these A antibodies find any A type antigens to react with. And if they do, we'll know that there's something going to happen called agglutination. There will be a clumping of the antibodies. So I'm going to use a clean toothpick for each and just swirl it around a little bit. Right now I'm going to use B. Here's the B antibody. Let's put one drop of B into all of the B wells for each of our patients. And see if those B antibodies find any red blood cells that have a B antigen on them. And if they do, they're going to attack them as it were. Or really they're going to just bind to them and put them in a big pile in the center, which is called a clump or an agglutination. Now A tends to agglutinate quickly within a few seconds and RH within even an equivalent few seconds, but B tends to take a little longer. So we may not see anything for B here for just a few more minutes, up to a minute and a half. So here's our last one, RH. This is RH antibody. So this bottle has things that don't, that are looking for uh, cells that have the RH antigen on them. And if they find a red blood cell with the RH antigen, they will bind to it. Attack it if you want to think like that, because that's what the immune system is doing. Really, we'll talk about what an antibodies do when we talk about that chapter, how they work. Just making a little reaction occur if there is one. Now, let's look at this one. I'm going to replace this with a white sheet of paper so that you can see a little better. Now if we look at this tray, we're looking at this tray and we're looking at the consistency of these things and right now I could tilt it just a little bit and I can see that this A well looks a bit thicker than it did before. Can you see that? There's a little bit of reaction going on in there. It's kind of gotten thick and clumped up. So it is agglutinating. So we do have the presence of A here. The A antibodies found red blood cells that had the A antigen and so by that clumping in the middle, that agglutination, we know that there is the presence of type A blood. Let's look at B. Now B, in relationship to A and RH, looks a little, well, it looks kind of like it did before. It looks a little shimmery, doesn't it? Liquidy, not much going on there. Looks pretty clear. Still looks very liquidy. The RH, on the other hand, you can see that one has also gotten thickened up, and so there is a clumping occurring in the middle, and that means that the RH antibodies did find a blood type, or a blood cell that has the RH factor on it, and so they surrounded it, bound to it, attacked it, put it in the middle, however you want to think about it, and so they have an agglutination uh, occurring right in the middle. So we have this thickening here at A, 
and a thickening in RH, and those indicate to us that I like to think of it as a fight broke out between the A antibodies that I added, the A antibodies that I added to this patient one blood. They did find that patient one had A's to attack, and so they attacked them. That's what you're seeing right there. These B antibodies, the B antibodies that we added here to this patient one's blood did not find anything, so nothing's happening. And then these RH antibodies, these RH antibodies that we added to this tray, I mean to this well, to patient one's blood, did find in patient one's blood that there are RH antigens to attack, and so they attack them. The antibodies attack the antigens, and now they're having a fight in the middle. So the easiest way to think about this is wherever you see a fight break out, meaning wherever it gets thick or coagulates or agglutinates, that is positive for that blood type. This blood type is A, because we did have a fight break out here, and RH, so it is A positive. There's no B, so we're not going to talk about B for this tray. So patient number one is A positive. Nothing happened at B. Let's look at patient number two. Now, this one might be a little harder to see on the camera, so I'll talk you through it. Note that, I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit. Note that, where's the, where's the one that's not moving? So the one that's not really moving is B. In that, that's the one that looks a little bit thicker than the other ones. So note that A is very liquidy, still looking, and RH still looks rather like it did at the beginning. You'll always see a little bit of sedimentation in there, that's not clumping. Right? But when you have a thickening where the entire sample is now affected, we know that we added B antibodies to this well of patient number two's blood, and those antibodies found B antigens on patient number two's blood to attack, and now they're having a fight. So this patient, patient number two, is the only one that reacted was B, so this patient is B. You have to say whether they are negative or positive for RH, so nothing happened at RH, so they are B negative, B negative. Let's look at patient number three. Now in patient number three, again, look at the consistency, and I understand that this is on a camera, so it's not quite as good as being in person, but you can see that these three, all of them, are now agglutinated. They are all thick. None of them look like they did when we first added them. The, liquid, the liquidity is gone. Right, so now they're just very thick. And we can see we had a good reaction here at B, finally. So we did have a reaction at A. We put A antibodies into patient three's blood and they did find something to attack. So that patient three does have A antigens. They do have type A as well as, let's look at B. We put B antigens into this patient's blood and they did find something to attack. So we have B type as well. So this person is A, B type, because we've had two reactions there, two agglutinations. Now let's look at RH. We put RH antibodies into patient three's blood and there was a reaction. So these RH antibodies did find an RH antigen to attack. So we've got three fights going on here. So it's positive at all three. So we would call this person blood type A, B, positive. We just say the word positive instead of saying RH positive. But if you want to say RH positive in your head to keep it straight, you can. So this person is AB positive because there was a reaction at all three of the wells. Let's look at this patient number four. All right, so patient number four, and you will always see, like I said, a little bit of sedimentation over time that happens the longer the sample is allowed to remain in the tray. But 
I will tell you right now that these samples are all very similar to when they were added. They don't look much different than when I first added the patient four, even though I added the uh, antibodies to them. So there was no reaction in A. It looks just like it did before. Even though we put A antibodies into patient four's blood, we didn't find any uh, red blood cells with the A antigen, so nothing happened. We put B antibodies into patient four's blood and the B antibodies didn't find anything to do either. Nothing happened. So that patient does not have B antigens on their red blood cells. And then we put RH antibodies into patient four's blood. Still nothing. They didn't find anything uh, to attack either. So in all three of these trays, nothing happened. Which blood cell, which red blood cell has no antigens? If you said O, you're correct. So there's no A's on type O and there's no B's on type O. So we know this person is type O because nothing happened at A or B. There's no A present, there's no B present. The only blood type that has nothing on it that you've learned is type O. Is there any RH present? No. So this person is O negative. They are negative for RH. O negative is when there are no reactions at any of the wells in the tray. So I'll put everybody back like they were. And I'll point these out one more time. In patient number one, there was a reaction at A, and there was a reaction at RH. So this person is A positive. Nothing happened at B. In patient number two, there was a reaction. Oops, I have these. Oh. In patient number two, there was no reaction at A, but there was a reaction at B. There was a reaction at B, and there was no reaction at RH. So nothing at A, nothing at RH. This patient only is B. So B negative. They are negative for RH. So you must cite whether or not they have RH or not. Right? This third patient, patient number three, there was a reaction at A, there was one at B, and there was one at RH. So this patient has all three. They are A, B, positive, positive for RH. And then patient number four, no reaction at any of the wells. And of course you know that uh, the one cell that has no A or B antigens is O. So this person is O, and then they didn't have a reaction for RH, so they are O negative. Let's try something else. 